just a minute okay okay so once he uh the dalton proposed the theory of atoms okay so later on some more experiments uh, conducted regarding whether it is possible to a uh, conclude that atom is a indivisible uh, thing or is there any uh just okay so is it only the a uh, final thing is the atom okay are they really indiv indivisible okay so later on the studies were in the direction to check okay so whether atom is really indivisible okay because uh, the dalton theory said that the atom is the smallest particle which cannot be further uh, divided okay but later on there were some more studies to check is it true can we not divide can we not divide uh the atom into further smallest particle okay in that direction several experiments were also conducted several other experiments were also conducted and it was found that atom contains some sub, uh, some more sub atomic particles also okay so they are in the form of protons and the electrons okay so after uh uh what the study conducted by the dalton okay some more experiments were conducted in those experiments so it was concluded that uh atom is a not only the smallest thing but the atom it also contains some more subatomic particles also in that protons and electrons are the subatomic particles okay but a clear picture of structure of atom was given by j j thomson that is in that uh, in that particular field that is uh, the atom can be further decomposed into some more particles okay so in that particular uh, direction so j j thomson uh, he gave further uh, theories as well as the models and particularly okay so he proposed the structure of atom okay so uh, the structure of atom as proposed by jj thompson okay so it was just a very rough structure and it was compared to a pudding like structure okay a pudding like structure so where he imagined that the entire sphere the atom it is nothing but a sphere of positive charge and in that sphere the electrons are embedded like dry fruits in a pudding okay so here and there very randomly they are embedded okay and you can imagine that it was the particular model proposed by thomson uh, with a watermelon also okay so in the watermelon you can see that there is a red edible part which we call it as a fruit and here and there the seeds are spread the black color seeds are spread okay so whatever the model that was proposed by thomson it was also like that only okay so whatever that red color edible part is there that he imagined like a sphere to represent the positive charged sphere and whatever the black seeds are there black seeds so he imagined them like electrons okay so therefore the entire structure uh, given by thomson is as shown so this is a positive sphere and the embedded are the electrons embedded are the electrons okay so here is some brief for uh, Uh, what uh, details about uh, this J J Thomson? So he is a British uh, physicist, okay, and he worked in this, and uh, he got a uh, uh, Nobel Prize also for his work in the discovery of the electrons. So he said through his models that atoms can be further divided, and it contains subatomic particles also, that is electrons, okay. But he did not say that electrons and protons were inside the atom okay so according to his imagination his study okay so there is a positively charged sphere in that electrons were embedded okay and also in his proposal okay he said that an atom consists of a positively charged sphere 
okay and the electrons are embedded in it these were the results of his experiment okay and the negative and positive charges were equal in magnitude therefore the atom is always electrically neutral okay so these were the two main findings of uh, thomson jj thomson okay uh, he said that atom electrically remains neutral this is because the positive charges and electrons are equal in magnitude but further there were uh, some more researches carried out in this uh, particular study because the study did not stop there as soon as jj thompson exhibited his model okay the research did not stop there there were some more studies regarding the uh, interatomic uh, uh, structure that is what exactly uh, is the structure inside an atom and in the thompson model it was said that inside the sphere the electrons were buried okay but there was no clear picture about how the electrons were buried is there any particular structure so there were further study was in the direction of finding how exactly the electrons are arranged inside an atom okay so in that particular uh, direction there was one more uh, scientist rutherford okay e rutherford he started his study in this particular concept okay so he is a famous uh, researcher uh, in the field of radioactivity and discovery of nucleus of an atom with a gold foil experiment so for that he got nobel prize also okay so the rutherford model is a famous model which explains about uh, what the nucleus concept okay so so far uh, the previous theorists they did not uh, use the term like a nucleus only okay in the dalton theory absolutely there was no concept of electrons and all and he coined the name atom and the dalton theory it was proposed that atom is the least particle which cannot be further divided but later in the previous theory that is in the jj thomson theory it was discovered that atom can be further uh, divided and it it is like a sphere like structure in which electrons were embedded and still there was no use of the term like any nucleus okay but later Uh, rutherford he used the uh, term nucleus okay so let us see what are his findings and what are his uh, postulates uh, according to uh, the rutherford experiments okay so what he said based on the several experiments he uh, done uh, in the field is um, he particularly uh checked okay how uh, the structure inside the atom uh, uh is going to affect the entire uh, concept so like particularly he considered scattering of alpha particles by a gold foil that is he particularly conducted an experiment where he used a gold foil it was a very thin gold foil okay and that gold foil was made to hit by a uh, alpha particles so these alpha particles were nothing but stream of uh, fast moving okay helium ions okay the gold particle the gold uh, foil was hit by uh, double charged helium ions okay and he why that experiment was conducted to uh, just to see that whether all the alpha particles which are hitting the gold foil what happens to them exactly what happens to them okay so whether uh, they are going to pass through the foil or whether they are going to uh, come back or whether they are going to be absorbed so what exactly happens okay so when he did that particular experiment so what was uh, his observation in that experiment is most of the alpha particles which hit the gold foil they passed through the gold foil they did not come back they passed through the gold foil okay but some of the alpha particles they were deflected by the they were simply deflected uh, by the gold foil at some certain angles very small angles and also one more observation was okay so one uh, out of uh, Twelve uh, thousand particles was rebound. That is, it came back at one eighty degree angle. 
okay so in general so to in order to uh, uh, summarize his work okay so whenever the the uh, uh, what are this alpha particles were hit alpha particles hit the gold foil okay he observed three things one is alpha particles were passed through the gold uh, foil some alpha particles they deflected in certain angles and one more observation one more observation was some of them they came back at 180 degree okay that is there was a complete rebound of these particles okay so therefore by this he concluded something his conclusion was okay on the basis of the experiment that there must be some positively charged there must be some positively charged uh, center and he named it as the nucleus and also he said that since some of the alpha particles they pass through the gold foil it is because there is some gap inside the atomic structure there must be some gap inside the atomic structure that's why they pass through the gold foil okay and uh, as some of the uh, alpha particles they came back his conclusion was the electrons inside the atom are revolving around the particular nucleus and also size of the nucleus is very small when compared to the entire size of the atom so these were the conclusion of his experiment by conducting that gold foil experiments okay but still the structure of the electrons he simply said that the electrons are revolving around the uh, some uh, positively charged center and the positively charged center he called it as uh, what nucleus he called it as a nucleus okay but still he did not uh, uh, clearly gave the picture of how the electrons are distributed inside a atom so therefore some of the drawbacks some of the drawbacks are that only that is the revolution of electrons whatever he said okay uh, this made uh, his uh, theory unstable because when he said revol electrons revolve then whenever the revolving par uh, particles revolve they undergo certain acceleration and due to acceleration the electrons would lose energy and they will fall back into the nucleus okay so therefore again uh, some of the concepts regarding the structure of the electrons where they are exactly situated what is their distribution what is their number so it was not clearly given by the rutherford model okay so therefore continuing the research in the same field okay so finally what is came is bohr's atomic model this neil bohr is another researcher okay so he was born in copenhagen in uh, Uh, on 7th october 1885 okay and he lived up to 1962 1962 okay so his research was considered to be significant uh, research in this particular field and he has also written several books on the theory of spectra atomic theory etc okay and uh, this this particular uh, model whatever suggested by the bohr okay it comes it overcomes the objections objections which are raised against the rutherford model okay and also he put uh, two important uh, postulates so one is uh, only uh, certain special orbits are there inside an atom okay so which are nothing but discrete orbits and they are called as orbits of electrons present inside the atom that is one his theory okay so what is the first postul postulate is inside the atoms there are some discrete orbits orbit is nothing but a circular path okay and the electrons reside only these in these parts and also while revolving uh, in these discrete orbits the electrons do not radiate any energy so this is another uh, postulate what is the first one first one is electrons are present on the discrete orbits which are uh, present uh, inside an atom and whenever the electrons revolve around this discrete orbits they do not radiate any energy okay so this was the particular uh, concept put forth by the uh, bohr's uh, atomic model okay now to uh, further continue with the bohr's model so he gave a picture like this okay so the center part as you can see he called it as a nucleus now surrounding this nucleus this term was coined by rutherford only 
But where the Rutherford model failed is in explaining uh, how the electrons are distributed, what is the location of the electrons. That solution is given by Bohr's model. So, in the Bohr's model, he showed these orbits, that is circular paths. Okay. So, these orbits are surrounding the nucleus and they are discrete in nature. Why discrete? Because they are, there is no overlap among them. Okay. They are discrete in nature and there are several such uh, rings are there, orbits are there. Okay. And as you can see in the presentation, the center nucleus and surrounding the nucleus, whatever the first orbit appears, that is called as a K shell, and uh, it is named as n is equal to 1. Okay, K shell only. Uh, we will discuss about n later. Okay, let us first call their names. The second shell, it is called as a L shell. Next one is a M shell. Last one is a N shell. Okay, so these are called as what? Some energy levels. So here, the distribution of electrons into different atom was suggested by Bohr. Okay, so what he suggested? Distribution of the electrons was his major study. Now, the following rules were uh, used for writing the number of electrons in the different shells. So now, whatever these surrounding orbits are are there, they are called as particularly shells. Okay, and what is the rule that is followed uh, to write in each shell? The maximum number of electrons that can be present in a shell is given by 2n square. 2n square. Okay. So, what is this n? n represents the number of the shell. For example, k shell number is n is equal to 1. L shell number is n is equal to 2. Okay. M shell is a third shell that is n is equal to 3 and n shell is the last shell n is equal to 4. Okay. So, therefore, according to this particular rule, okay, as k shell is the first shell, for this n is equal to 1. So, therefore, number of electrons in the n shell, k shell is only 2. Okay. Similarly, in the next shell, that is n is equal to 2, okay. the number of electrons is again 2 square into 2. So, as n increases, you will have to just calculate what is the number of electrons covered or a number of electrons present in each orbitals. Okay. And furthermore, uh, there is one more rule. Electrons are not accommodated in a given shell unless the inner shells are filled. Okay. So, there is one more. That is, in order to go into the L shell, first of all, K shell should be filled up. That is, until and unless the innermost shells are filled up, electrons are not allowed to jump into other shells. So that is, first it has to fill up the K shell. After filling the K shell, if still electrons are there, then they can go into L shell. After completely covering the L shell, then they can go into the M shell. This is what is the rule. Okay. So, now up to this. So, this was the theory uh, as well as the picture given uh, by the Neil Bohr about the atomic structure. Okay. So, this is what is exactly the introductory part in order to give... Uh, Okay, go in detail in your syllabus. So, your syllabus will start something like for quantum mechanics and some uh, what uh, topics, uh, topic in a sense, some uh, points uh, with the Bohr model and uh, converting this Bohr's postulate into some difference of energy levels and all. Okay. So, these details will take up in the next class. Yes, hello. You can uh, unmute your uh, voice now. You can unmute your voice. You can unmute your voice. Yes, Mega. Mega is online. Yes, ma'am. Mega. Priyanka. Yes, ma'am. Okay, now Priyanka, you tell me. Uh, did you uh, clearly listen to the lecture? Yes, ma'am. My voice was clear, no? Yes, ma'am. And what about the presentation? Did you see all the slides clearly? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and I finally, tell me, did you... Also. Huh? What? Yes, tell me. I take it screenshot also, ma'am. You are taking screenshot also. Okay, that's very good. <laughs> Actually, this is not there in your syllabus. Okay, this is not there in your syllabus. It is just uh, as an introduction to... Uh, to yes, 
what has been the research in this particular field? That is, from where exactly uh, the work has begun regarding the atoms? Okay, so till we reach this shell concept and all. So what I am teaching the next class uh, is exactly concerned with the syllabus. Okay, but this is required in order to understand the various terminologies uh, uh, in your very first topic itself. So you need to understand all this. Okay, now did you understand whatever uh, I explained so far? Okay, so okay. Yes, others. Rohit. He is online, Rohit.